She was a virtuous woman, a loyal woman. Where thou goest, I will go. A dedicated, committed, and sacrificial woman. Where thou lodgest, I will lodge. An outstanding woman of God. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Join the Reverend Dr. Dylan Toussaint for an in-depth look at the book of Ruth and exposing issues related to love and marriage, religion and culture, wealth and poverty, hardship and pain, joy and sorrow. This and every Wednesday night at 7.30 for a brand new Bible study series entitled The Truth About Ruth. The Truth About Ruth, Wednesday nights at 7.30. Welcome to the online Bible study series on the Edgewater Waterford Circuit of Baptist Churches in St. Catherine, Jamaica. And a special welcome to those viewing from overseas. May we all be led and guided by the Spirit of God as we study His Word. But before we proceed, let us pray. Again we come to you, O Lord, receptive to and appreciative of your word. We ask you therefore to have your way as you speak to and through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Last week, we continued our study entitled The Truth About Ruth by looking at episode 8. Yes, episode 8. And episode 8 came to us from Ruth chapter 1, verse 14 through to verse 18. And we subtitled that study, A Parting of the Ways. In so doing, we noted last week that the text is really set within the context of Naomi's imminent and final departure to her homeland, Judah. And in so doing, she made her wishes known as clear as she could. However, after stating their opposing views in that regard, We saw in the text a dramatic turn of events in light of the following. First of all, Oprah's action found in verse 14 and verse 15. Oprah's action. In a nutshell, we said and noted that as Oprah departed from Naomi and Ruth, In more ways than one, it was an emotional departure. It included weeping and kissing, and it was also an extreme departure because she reportedly went back to live with her people in Moab and to worship the gods of Moab. And then secondly, last week, we we noted Ruth's declaration. Ruth's declaration. In verse 16 and verse 17, those famous words that have been known for many years by many people, where she said, entreat me not to leave you or to return from following after you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, your God, my God, etc. We said that that was a specific request on her part. And also a strong resolve. Because she went on to even say, where you die, I will die. And where you be, where you are buried, I will bury, be buried as well. But we also said that was a sacred responsibility. Because she concluded by saying, the Lord do so to me. And more also, if aught but death part thee and me. Stating and showing how sacred she regarded this responsibility that she had taken upon herself. And then last week we concluded by noting Naomi's reaction. Her reaction. Verse 18 says, when she saw 
that Ruth was steadfastly minded to go with her. When she saw that Ruth was serious, then she no longer spoke to her about the matter. Her reaction was basically one of resignation and acceptance. And it was based on what she observed and acknowledged about Ruth, that Ruth was serious in regards to her statement, in regards to her declaration. And so that was what we looked at last week as we noted this whole matter of Ruth deciding to go with Naomi back to her homeland. Tonight, we segue to episode 9 of our series. And so it takes us to Ruth chapter 1. Ruth chapter 1, verse 19 through to verse 22. And it reads as follows. So they went until they came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass, when they were come to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved about them, and they said, Is this Naomi? And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why call, or why then call me Naomi? Seeing the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me. So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabites, her daughter-in-law with her, which returned out of the country of Moab. And they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of the barley harvest. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now tonight's study is subtitled, Naomi's Journey Back to Judah. Tonight we're looking on them actually making that journey and arriving at their destination. And so in this final section of Ruth chapter 1, Naomi, accompanied by her daughter-in-law Ruth, actually took the journey to her homeland and hometown. And of course, we're talking about Judah and Bethlehem, her homeland, Judah, her hometown, Bethlehem. Now, now it's interesting, beloved, that she originated, that's Naomi, originated from a place which had no great significance at that time. But years after, became known as the birthplace of the Messiah. Isn't that interesting? That, that she would have had no idea that her hometown of Bethlehem would become the birthplace of the Messiah, the Redeemer of the world, centuries after. She had no idea that this place would become so famous. And so what we need to understand is that oftentimes where we are now, the situations we are in now, where we are from, we have no idea what's, how things are going to pan out, how things are going to work out in the future. Because that's how life is. The way things look now, pretty much may not look the same way years from now. Be that as it may, the following are evident within the story. First of all, I want to highlight what I want to call a, a successful return. A successful return. Found in 19, verse 19, the first part, and verse 22. Let me read them for you again. They state, So they too went until they came to Bethlehem. So Naomi returned and Ruth the Moabites, her daughter-in-law with her, which returned out of the country of Moab. They came to Bethlehem in the beginning, the beginning of the barley harvest. I put it to us, beloved, that the return 
was successful, yes? Successful in that, first of all, they arrived safe, safely. They arrived safely. And, and I, I, I don't want us to belittle, to overlook or undervalue that reality, that they arrived safely. They, they, they had to traverse mountains, valleys, streams. They, they had to go through areas of uh, places of loneliness and danger. But they arrived safely. And, and I, I'm emphasizing this because I think we always need to bear in mind that when we go out, when we leave our homes, and when we come back home safely in the days, in the nights, whatever time you reach back home, you need to be very thankful. Because so many things could have happened, huh? And, and, and they arrived safely. It was a successful journey in that they arrived home safely. It, it was also a successful journey in that their arrival was timely. It was timely. And here is why. When Naomi left her homeland and the hometown in the first part of this chapter one, first part of this story, if you remember, it was during a time of famine. That's found in verse one of chapter one of Ruth. In a time of famine. Now, when she returned, it was during a time of fruit. Fullness. Why? Because as the scripture tells us, it was the time of the barley harvest. So a time of famine was when she left last time. Now she's returning. Time of fruitfulness, the barley harvest. Now, for those who may have forgotten or didn't know, Barley is a cereal grass that has seeds which are used to make malt drinks and food for farm animals. And there's a lot of talk about Ukraine. Ukraine is known for its production of barley as well. But Israel is also on that list of nations and um, when we're talking now about Judah in particular, and the barley, a cereal grass that has seeds used to make malt drinks and food for farm animals. And, and now you're looking on a, a, a photo, actually, of the barley crop. It, it has much similarity, by the way, to wheat. And so from afar, it's easy to confuse the two. That was the reality. That when they arrived in Judah, in particular in Bethlehem, it was a time of this barley harvest. And it was therefore a fruitful, productive time. It was a good time. An opportune, timely opportunity for them to experience the, the fruit of the labor of the people. It was the barley harvest. My, my, my second observation in this story is this, that we see a strange response. A strange response. The return was successful, but it's greeted with a strange response. Verse 19, the second part of verse 19 states, And it came to pass when they were come to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved about them. And they said, the citizens of the city of Bethlehem said, Is this Naomi? Is this Naomi? Now, the response of these people of Bethlehem may be interpreted in two main ways. Firstly, 
It, it may be interpreted that they were genuinely surprised to see her. Sort of like a, a form of exclamation. An exclamation, if you would, that they were they were genuinely surprised to see her. Is this Naomi? Whoa, Naomi has come back. And they were perhaps surprised, genuinely surprised to see her. As they exclaimed in regards to that statement. We don't know. But also there's a another possibility. And the next possibility is that they were being sarcastic toward her as a form of humiliation. Being sarcastic toward her. In other words, could it be that they were saying, is this Naomi? And sort of looking down upon her. Could this be the same Naomi that had left us over 10 years ago? Could this be the same Naomi that when we were in distress, when we were going through our famine, she just deserted us and ran off with her family. Could this be the same Naomi that looked pretty good, but now she's looking anything far from good? Is this the same Naomi that we knew? Who when she left, she, she left with her husband and her, and their two sons. Now her husband has died and the two sons have also died. And here we see a strange person with her. A Moabitess. Her daughter-in-law. Is, is this the same Naomi? Could it be that it was a sarcastic comment? A, 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 an artist has drawn a picture of the scene. I want you to look at it because it, 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 the, the two persons of focus within the drawing are, of course, Naomi and Ruth. And Ruth, it is felt, is the one who has the stick in her hand. And they are now, they have now come into the city of, 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 of Bethlehem, the town of Bethlehem. And look on the look on the, the ladies at the back there to the right. Look 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 at them. Look at the expression on their faces. Look 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 on the others to the left. Different expressions. And what I think the artist is trying to depict is perhaps the fact that maybe you know we have a little of both in terms of this response. Is this Naomi? One of genuine surprise, but also one of sarcasm. One of sarcasm. Even the very dog gives a response there, you can see. And, and isn't this the reality that some people face when they leave to come back? And if they are coming back, coming back not as bright, not as successful, not looking as they looked when they left. Coming back perhaps because they have to come back. And now things have changed so much for them in a negative way. And people are responding in a negative You know how some people can be. Is this Naomi? You know how some people can be sarcastic. Is this the same Naomi? You know how some people can be cruel in their responses. Is this the same, Naomi? Perhaps this was what was taking place when they returned. That leads us now to the final observation in our story this evening. That we are now seeing as well a somber remark. A somber remark found in verse 20 and 21. It, it, the verses read as follows. And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi. Call me Mara. For the Almighty hath de dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full. 
The Lord had brought me home again empty. Why then call ye me Naomi, seeing the Lord had testified against me? And the Almighty has afflicted me. Call me not Naomi. Can you imagine? Call me Mara. But the Almighty had dealt very bitterly with me, etc. Now, please note everybody that the, the name Naomi means pleasant. And the word Mara means bitter. Pleasant, bitter. So when she says, don't call me Naomi, she's saying, stop calling me pleasant. And when she says, call me Mara, she's saying, call me bitter. Why? Because the Lord had dealt built bitterly with me. Why, why such a response? No. Why such a response from, from Naomi, this, this woman of God? What, what, why such a response as she's, she's coming home? One would have thought she would have been happy, delighted to again see familiar faces, to return to her family and relatives back home in Bethlehem. Why such a response? I put it to us that there may be two main reasons that are really linked and intertwined. That firstly, she perhaps felt a sense of abandonment. Abandonment. Because she's saying the Lord had dealt bitterly with me. Bitterly. That, that, could it be that she felt abandoned by God? That, that, that God had left her. Imagine when she left Judah, she left with her husband and her two sons. Now they were deceased. And, and now she really is like a fish out of water in Moab. And now she has to come back. Could it be that she is saying that she just felt that God just wasn't on her side? God, God had just left her out in the wild, in the cold. God had abandoned her. And maybe there are persons watching and listening to this broadcast. You feel the same way or you have felt the same way. That, that somehow you, you feel as if God has abandoned you. He used to be with you. He walked with you. You could sense his presence, his power and his peace and his provisions. But now you feel a sense of abandonment. I put it to you that Jesus also felt that way. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me on the cross? The, the, the psalmist has felt that, um, felt that way in, in, in the Psalms. Why art thou cast thou no my soul? Because his soul felt low in spirit because he felt so far from God that God had abandoned him. That was what Naomi felt. But, but she also perhaps felt a sense of embarrassment. That, that maybe she wasn't as robust looking as she did when she le at first left her hometown. Maybe she, age had now come upon her, of course, at least 10 years had passed. Maybe when she looked on the fact that now her three family members had died. She's now coming back. Did she feel a sense of embarrassment of what people will be saying and thinking? And if, if, if when they were saying, is this Naomi, if that was a sarcastic remark, perhaps it added to the feeling of embarrassment. I wonder if there are persons watching and listening this broadcast, you you have been there, or you are there right now. You feel embarrassed by the way, or from the way, or because of the way life has turned out for you. The dreams and hopes and aspirations have been dashed because of 
life. You know, life has spun, but spun in a way that has left you embarrassed. That's that's life. And, and, and so when we look on stories like these, we need to understand that over and over again, there's nothing new under the sun. What has been will be again. And life is like that. People go through different stages and phases. That's what this story of Ruth and Naomi, this story is reminding us of these realities. There's more and on. But I leave with us some takeaways. Perhaps I already shared some in my discourse a while ago. But first of all, sometimes it is when we leave where we are and when we lose what we have that we learn to appreciate what we had. Let me say that again. Sometimes it's when we leave where we are and lose what we had or have that we learn to appreciate what we had. It's a reality. Secondly, feelings of abandonment and embarrassment, even by God, are, are neither new nor unnatural. It goes with the territory. It happens. It really happens. And it will happen again. I leave with us two questions for us to consider. Question number one, what, what are some other possible reasons or explanations for the response Naomi received when she returned to her homeland? Can you think of some other possible reasons, some other possible explanations for that type of a response? And final question. What are some other possible reasons or explanations for Naomi's remarks? Based on what she said, what are some other reasons apart from the embarrassment and apart from the sense of abandonment? What are some other possible reasons? I invite you as usual, if you feel so led, you have questions or comments or even the answers to the questions that I have posited, if you'd like to share them with me, please email those questions or comments, responses to the truth about roof 2022 at gmail.com. The truth about roof 2022 at gmail.com. I'd like to tell us that our prayer and counseling hotline number remains 876-220-6474. 876-220-6474. There is someone on the other end of that line ready willing and waiting to pray with and for you. And speaking about prayer, let us pray. Kind, loving, and righteous Lord, as we have once again explored and examined your word, we are truly mindful of the journeys and the journey of life that we experience from day to day. Lord, at some point, all of us have to return somewhere to something. And Lord, there will be various and varied responses to that reality. I pray, therefore, for those, Lord, who have to make and take that journey. I pray for those, Lord, who in so doing 
we'll have to face up to those responses and reactions. I pray for courage, boldness. I pray, Lord, that they will not be daunted or depressed or discouraged. I pray, Lord, that your joy will be their strength. I pray for persons tonight who feel a sense of abandonment. They feel, Lord, that the closeness they had with you, the ways in which they sense and felt your presence, your power, your peace, your provision is not there anymore. I pray that such persons will always remember that you said you promised never to leave or to forsake your people. Thank you, therefore, for hearing this prayer. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to reflect, to remind ourselves of these realities. May you bless your people going forward. For we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Please remember to share, like, and subscribe to our YouTube page. If you desire prayer and counseling, please call our prayer and counseling hotline at 876-220-6474. Continue to pray for each other. Have a blessed week.